while assigning the market value while assigning the market value market value there are certain challenges there are certain challenges that the economists have to overcome let's see what are these challenges let us say we have a tailor or a dressmaker okay he or she purchases a cloth worth let's say okay 500 rupees okay out of this 500 uh, they make something something uh, hundred rupees for stitching okay they are stitching charges stitching charges then rupees 50 are certain kind of add-ons okay like frill okay and they want to make an additional 150 rupees 150 rupees as profit as profit okay so which the total value will come out to be 500 plus 100 600 plus 700 plus 800 so the total value would be 800 rupees okay it will be to 800 rupees as the value of the dress okay is the value of the dress value of the dress value of the dress but if we are to count the value of the addition thing is only this particular 150 rupees and 100 rupees okay the value addition the value addition value addition here is only 100 of the stitching and 150 the profit amount and nothing else because the cloth was already there in the market which the tailor had has purchased and even the add-ons like frill or buttons or chain sets they were available in the market and they has been they they are already been counted so we will not consider these particular amounts okay so 500 and this 50 will not be counted again otherwise it will be considered as double counting okay or let's take another example here okay in this example let's take the case of wheat okay let's say we have this wheat grain it's a wheat grain okay it goes to the flour mill it goes to the flour mill and becomes flour okay so let's say we have this sack of flour and this flour goes further it can go either to a household to a household directly which where the the it will be created into chapatis okay let's say it comes with chapatis which will be consumed directly or it may also go to an industry a bread industry let's say and they create it into breads okay and they create bread out of it which goes further into the market to get sold okay it let's sell further in this case we see let's say the value of the wheat grain was 5 rupees for flour mill uh, they added a value of let's say 10 rupees so the total value comes out to be 10 plus 5 the 5 of wheat it equals to 15 rupees okay and this was the value addition value addition now for the household it comes out to be only 15 because they purchased it for the flour and they are not going to sell it further and in case of the bread manufacturer they purchase it for 15 rupees and they further add 10 rupees to it to create this bread to sell this bread bread loaf for 25 rupees okay so here in this case if we consider this 25 rupees this 25 rupees is equivalent of 5 rupees of the wheat okay 5 rupees of the wheat plus 10 rupees of the bread plus 10 rupees of the industry or rather the factory manufacturer as they have already added some kind of value to it so in this case we will only consider the value additions the value additions and not the whole amount not the whole amount as in other case it could be 5 of the wheat plus 15 of the flour plus 25 
of the bread which comes out to be 45 rupees which is certainly double counting the product so we will not consider this case we will only consider this case where only the value addition only the value addition has been counted so hence we say to overcome this challenge challenge we see the we see the value addition approach value addition approach approach to count the other way to solve this problem is the second way let's see the second way and this way we only see the expenditure method expenditure expenditure approach we only check the expenditure approach here the focus is entirely on the final sales final sales the focus the focus is entirely on the final sales of the product okay where though not directly but implicitly all prior stages all prior stages all prior stages of output of output creation are accounted for output creation are accounted for accounted for for example in the above case here of wheat flour and this bread we only take the price of this bread we only take the price of this bread which was 25 rupees okay and we are not going to charge any other things okay not not the wheat or not the flour milling thing okay and the third case the third approach the third approach approach is my income approach my income approach income approach here only the income is counted for and the income is of the factors of production so the income of the factors factors of production the factors of production are those who are responsible for producing things for example land labor manufacturer things like that and here it would be the income would be either the wages or the salary salary royalties royalties rent dividend and things like that etc so these are the things that we certainly consider to check the overcounting or to check the challenges while counting the output we'll know about the tools in our upcoming videos till then thanks for watching have a good day bye bye